Yeah, just before I do the presentation proper, I just wanted to just pick up on something, the question Oslin was posing at the end of the presentation, um, just from the Pacific uh, perspective. So the organisation I work for is an intergovernmental organisation from the Pacific region with 22 Pacific Island country, um, member countries and territories. And, uh, and, and that region, geodiversity is a very new concept. There's no geoparks. There's no um, sites formally recognised for the geodiversity. So from our perspective, this is a really important stepping stone. Um, it's creating momentum to a broader vision we have of establishing the first geoparks in the region and ultimately the vision to have a, a network of um, UNESCO Global Geoparks in the Pacific. So we thank everybody involved, IUGS and UNESCO, for this initiative. We think it's very important for our region. Um, so yeah, the presentation, I'm, I got the pleasure of presenting here, the, the active Yaso Yenkahe volcanic complex from Vanuatu. So yeah, this, the site is known as the, the lighthouse of the Pacific, which will become clear why further on during the presentation, but it's said when Captain Cook first voyaged in the Pacific, he was actually drawn to this island by the, the orange glow from the, from the island. Um, so yeah, the, the other authors just to acknowledge involved in the, the submission was Carolee Nemeth, uh, my colleague Dana Tingarea from Pacific Community, and Michelle Ledoro from the Vanuatu government. He, he was actually supposed to be here to present this. He's the one that prepared this presentation, so all credit to Michelle for this. And Dr. Ben, uh, who's here in the room, thank you very much for making us aware of this opportunity and your, your support with this submission. Okay, so... Yeah, the, the location, we were actually looking at the antipode. If we drilled straight through the earth here from Spain, we, we thought maybe we'd pop out somewhere on the other side of the earth around here, but it's actually a bit further south in New Zealand, but it's not far from the furthest place you could be. Um, so, yeah, we, I don't, we don't have a good tectonic map here, but I'm just going to point out some things on here to explain the region. So, yeah, so this is, this is the, the country is Vanuatu. Um, and here's a, it's an island group composed of 80, 83 islands in the archipelago. Um, and you know, so the, the, area we're the area we're focusing on here, the geosite is on Tana Island to the south of the archipelago, um, shown in the red square over here. Um, so, it, so it's located on the, w the western margin of the Pacific Ring of Fire. So... It's, it, it's a very dynamic and very active area. Um, so in this, in this area, you have the Australian plate subducting beneath the Pacific plate. And so it's a very dynamic area, and you, you actually have 10 volcanoes across the Vanuatu, active volcanoes across the Vanuatu group, seven aerial and three submarine. Um, and it, yeah, this, the, the, the area in Vanuatu is also exposed to a frequent and widespread seismicity. Um, shallow earthquakes going right down to 700 uh, kilometers, uh, sorry, 70 kilometers, or 700 kilometers on the, um, on the trench. Um, then it's also exposed to tsunamis, flooding, and cyclones. So all of these features make Vanuatu is actually on disaster ranking as the number one at-risk uh, country to natural disaster risk. So it's a very dynamic part of the world and likely Tana is probably one of the most dynamic uh, places within that region. So the, the current tectonic setting, the Australian plate didn't always subduct underneath the Pacific plate. Um, so previously the subduction was actually reversed um, with the, the Pacific plate subducting underneath the Australian plate. So we... And when you and that that's what's given rise to the different. There's three main island uh, geological groups. So when, when the when the Pacific Plate used to subduct under the um, Aus, under the Australian Plate, it it generated. The, the, this is the arc from that setting. These two islands here. And and that that was subducting along a trench um, to the east, which is called the Vitiaz Trench which is now inactive. But w w what is in this area, which, so it's not shown on the map, but there's the, the largest um, oceanic plateau in the world, 
is the Ontang Java Plateau is in this area here. It's about the size of Alaska and it's about 30 to 40 kilometers thick. So it's um, much thicker than the oceanic crust. So around 12 to 6 million years ago when that, that the Ontang Java Plateau collided with the subduction zone, there was a reversal in the subduction. Then that's when you got the present day uh, Vanuatu Trench opened up um, to the, immediately to the west of uh, Vanuatu. And then as that, as that, when that first opened up, that's when you got the, these, two island, these two islands here, Pentecost and here. That, they're the older arcs from that current uh, subduction direction. And then as that subduction is steepened along that plate, now you have the central chain, which is the, these islands through here, including Tana, which is where you have that current active uh, volcanism. So, yeah, looking at the, um, the geological context here, yeah, there's a lot of slides here with just words, so I'm going to try and read them in relation to this map. Um, so, the, yeah, the, this, it's called the Yasor Yenhaki Volcanic Complex, and it, it's hosted, oops, sorry, it's hosted within the, the, Siwa, the Siwa caldera. So, and the Siwa caldera is marked by this ring fracture which Ben was alluding, alluding to earlier. So the, the, it's got the ring fracture around the outside, which marks the, sing, the Siri caldera. And then, you, and then you, in the middle, you have this block here, the Yenkahi resurgent dome, or resurgent block. And then to the west of that, this is where you have the Yasor, the active Yasor volcano, which is the, the lighthouse of the Pacific here. So, and wh where that's located in the context of the island is in the, the southeast uh, corner of the island. So, the, um, this block here is composed of uh, uh, intrusions from around 20,000 uh, years ago. And the, I'll go to the next slide here. And then this, oops, sorry. Yeah, so the, the, the block you can really click. So this is a satellite derived digital elevation model. You can really see clearly the, um, the resurgent block here, the Yenkahi resurgent block, and then the soil volcanoes here. So it's the, the caldera is basically at sea level, but then you have this resurgent block rising up to around 300 meters. And this is one of the most rapidly uplifting uh, resurgent blocks in the world. So you have, and, th and that's some of the science behind that is in this area here, you have some coral reefs from thousand year old coral reefs. They're at 150 meter elevation. So that's indicating an uplift rate of around 156 millimeters a year. So very quickly uh, uplifting. And yeah, one, so it's known as one of the fastest uh, caldera floor resurgences in the world. And then, yeah, and then in, ter in terms of your saw, the volcano, it's been a persistently active uh, basaltic tracking andesitic volcano. Uh, it's 361 metres high, uh, 1,500 metres wide, and it's located within the Siri caldera. Uh, it it's been in a near constant state of eruption for approximately 800 years, so that's what's given it the, the name, the Lighthouse of the Pacific. So it's got a 400 meter wide crater with three active vents located at the summit. Um, and the eruption is described as a Strombolian type with uh, intermittent phreatomagmatic events. Yeah, and I'll move, I'll move on to that. Yeah, moving on to the scientific uh, tradition. So yeah, due to it, it's got very easy access um, it's really an excellent place for studying vo active volcanic processes and, and, and their products. Uh, and great place to do yeah, observations and test, test theories and do measurements. Um, and there's, there's been a lot of study going on over the last 20 years, but it's a relatively new place for study compared to a lot of the other sites which have been presented. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd encourage any other volcanologists in the room that are interested in studying to come and research this, this site. Uh, further to further the, the knowledge of the site. But uh, also in terms of the traditional knowledge and cultural heritage, there's, that's been going on for much longer, for hundreds of years, but in the Pacific region, that, 
that's been uh, passed down through oral storytelling and oral traditions. So there's a lot of potential and work for happening in the Pacific region for uh, connecting that traditional knowledge and cultural heritage with um, modern science, and in this case with geoscience. So there's a lot of potential in that regard because there's a lot of wisdom um, with that traditional knowledge and cultural heritage. Um, yeah, so the, the main arguments for the uh, recognition is uh, yeah, the, the volcanic complex is it's an excellent active site to study the diversity of volcanic processes and their eruptive products associated with a near sea level mafic intermediate arc volcano. Yeah, and th this location provides graphic examples of welded to non-welded mafic ignimbrites and their proximal to distal phase use variations. Um, the, the Strombolian style and phreatomagmatic explosive eruptions of Yasuo can be observed with ease and safety. I mean, it's a really amazing place to go, um, to go and view uh, volcanic eruptions. I hope you all get a chance to do so. Um, yeah, the, and the caldera hosts a rapidly uplifting resurgent block and a fast-filling caldera, demonstrating the dynamic processes associated with a modern caldera volcano. And yep, before I say thank you too much and muchas gracias, I tried to add a video here at the end, which I took on my cell phone. Let's see if it works or not. He's got it there. Thank you, John. Yeah, so I hope you all get to come and enjoy the fireworks display of the Pacific. Yeah, thanks for Thank you.